All right, friends, today we're going to continue looking at Matthew chapter 6. And first, a couple of quick introductions. This is Lucy over here. She's hiding behind that ear. All right, there's Lucy right there. And then back here, hiding behind me is Lottie. Where's Lottie? There she is. This is Lottie. Lottie's our new little pup. Um, and they're going to be hanging out with us today. So we're going to keep looking at Matthew 6. And remember, the overarching concern for Jesus in this part of the Sermon on the Mount is pretty simple. He doesn't want his followers to become hypocrites. And he knows that this will be a temptation. I mean, he's seen good, faithful people fall into this, where one presents themselves in a, a, a way outwardly, but then lives different uh, privately. There's self-deception involved also. We talked about all of this on Monday. And Jesus is really concerned that his followers not fall into that trap. So he talks about some ways not to practice these acts of piety, to do these religious things. But then he also talks about how to do some of these things. And yesterday, Alex walked us through some great information about uh, the Lord's Prayer. And then I'm going to follow up on that today also and talk more kind of on a devotional level about how this section can really help us with our prayer lives. So he says to pray secretly. We talked about that on Monday, what that means. And then he says in verse 9, chapter 6, pray like this. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Words that are probably familiar to you. you know, different traditions will translate certain words a little bit differently. In most Protestant churches, we add at the end, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. That was added later. But you get here the words of the Lord's Prayer. So when Jesus teaches his disciples to pray, he says, pray like this. So does that mean say these exact words every time you pray? No, though they're good words to pray. He doesn't mean pray exactly these words every time, but he means pray in this manner. Well, what can, what can we learn about this? Well, I'll say two things. One, super quick, and the second will take a few minutes to dig into. The super quick one is this. If you're in a place where you don't know what to pray, this is a good place to start. If you're just at your wit's end, or you're new to the to the Christian faith, you just don't know what to pray, just pray these words. But I, I think there's a deeper level to it also. I think he's saying, hey, look at the manner in which I'm praying. Not even just the specific words, but look at, at the way in which I'm talking to the Father. And what I want to show you here is, is one way to look at this that has been really, really helpful to me. In fact, I prayed in this way um, this morning before I turned this uh, this iPhone on to, to go through this teaching. I prayed in, in this way. Let's look at this. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Well, what's happening here? Right off the bat, what Jesus is doing is he's addressing the Father. Say, so if you want to, to pray like this, do this. But first, you just, you just address God. And here's one of the crazy things that Jesus seems to believe. And that is that when we say God's name, that God is listening. That, that we have access to a, a relationship with, to an interaction with God the Father. Which just seems crazy, but yet that, that's what Jesus is, is teaching here. And then hallowed be your name. Hallowed, like related to holy, just means set apart. It means separate. It means like sacred. I mean... It means that you are, are acknowledging that God is above you. So I see this as kind of a move, um, like looking up, okay? Like looking looking uh, upward. And look at this next one. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I picture this as a move downward. So we address God, like the Almighty, and then we say, um, and, and come and let your will be done here. It's like what, what you're up to in, in heaven, like let, let that be done 
here on earth also. We want more than anything is we want your will to be done here. So we address our Heavenly Father, and then we, we invite our Heavenly Father to, to be active here in our lives. Give us this day our daily bread. Now picture this kind of in the center. Because now we're talking about like the, the, the center of what's happening right in front of us in this, this very moment. Whatever it is that, that we need in this moment, Lord, provide that. And then two other moves. Forgive us of our debts as we have forgiven our debtors. This is where we look back and we pray for forgiveness and we search our hearts for those that, that, that we need to forgive. I think that it can be more than that also. We're thinking back towards things that, that have happened in the past that we're concerned about. This is about looking back. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. It's about moving forward. Continue to be with us. Free us from, uh, from temptation. Deliver us uh, from evil. And then, you know, what's not in here is, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. And I picture that as kind of wrapping the whole thing up as a last little word of reminder that everything is his kingdom his power, his glory. So we do everything in his kingdom, by his power, for his glory. So if you're trying to think, all right, how is it that I pray, consider doing these, these five things. Looking up, just addressing God. Looking down and inviting God to be with you in the moment. Looking at right where you are and praying that God will meet your needs today looking back and asking for forgiveness and seeking to forgive others, and looking forward and praying for God's continued provision and guidance as you go. You know, when I prayed before I turned this iPhone on, I you know, addressed God. I asked that his will would be done. I asked that he guide me in this moment as we're preparing to, to go through this teaching. I asked that he forgive me of any trespasses and, and sins in my life, and especially those that would affect the ability to, to be able to, to present this well today. And I asked that he would guide me and us moving forward. It was something like that. It was some kind of prayer like, like, like that. It's, it's that simple, prayer can be. So if you're intimidated by prayer or you're just looking for a new way to pray, I encourage you to consider that. Address God. Invite God. Talk about your basic needs right now. Look back. And then look forward. Jesus is interested here right in the middle of the Sermon on the Mount in helping the people who want to walk in the way that he is leading them. He, he's interested in helping them to know how to pray in a manner that connects what's happening um, uh, internally in, in their lives to the real world that connects them to God, that, 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 that goes beyond prayer that is just for performance, but prayer that really is changing them from the inside out and making effects in the world that we can't even understand. So the call to action here is pretty simple. Will you pray in that way? And will you pray in that way today? God bless you, friends, and I'll see you again later this week. Thank you.